Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Golf Only Better podcast in association with Sporting Life as we look ahead to the 150th Open Championship at St Andrews. And delighted, as always, to be joined by Ben Coley of SportingLife.com and Dave Tyndall, Betfair Golf Tipster. Chaps, welcome and nice to be here in person. Yes. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very cosy and friendly. I can it is, now yeah. look to see when to say hello so we don't talk over <laughs> each other. No delays. Yeah. Exactly. No excuses. <laughs> exactly right. Listen, uh, lovely to have you both here and fabulous that we are previewing uh, the Open Championship at St Andrews. Before we get to that, can I just very quickly reflect, if I can, on what was an amazing performance at the US Open by Matt Fitzpatrick. I was delighted that we have another Yorkshire major winner. But how chuffed were you, Dave, first of all, to see a guy who has really been trending, but is without doubt one of the hardest workers in the game, picking off a major victory? Yeah, fully deserved. And it was a, a bit of a curiosity why he didn't have a better record in the majors. And we were thinking, oh, is he going to be one of those who just never quite gets it right? And then he played really well, didn't he, in the US PGA? And, and that was kind of the marker. And you thought, right, he's got that under his belt. Next time he's in position, I reckon he'll do a lot better. And because these majors come rat a tat tap mm-hmm. you know, to wait a month later and he was in that position, the fact that he'd won the US Amateur there gave him another layer of confidence. Billy Foster on his bag, add to the Yorkshire theme. <laughs> and it just played out beautifully. And he, I don't know, as soon as he hit that first tee shot in the final round, I just thought, he's on it today. I sort of knew, almost knew he was going to win from there. He just looked so focused and confident. I had a chat to him, obviously. He sort of said it was the, the perfect week, having won at Brookline before the US Amateur. He'd been trending. Great relationship, as you mentioned, with Billy. And they, they work beautifully together he said just everything went perfectly on that Sunday for you what what's really kind of stood out in the emergence of Matt now as a as a major winner and and let's not forget the added length which has really taken everybody by storm yeah and I think it speaks to that um the level of hard work and attention to detail he puts in he's just different Mm -hmm. I mean we we kind of group all these golfers they're all brilliant obviously but there are some have just got that that extra something about them and Matt's it's easy to say now, isn't it? But I think Matt's always been one of those right back from his amateur days. And he, he's looked and he's taken a measured view of what he needed to do better. Um, and he's done it. And I don't think it's any coincidence that adding that extra 10 yards, I mean, very reminiscent of Francesco Molnari when he won his major four years ago. Um, the thing that really stands out, though, actually came in the aftermath. I mean, the round itself on Sunday, what did he hit? 17 greens. He mm. barely missed a shot. Um, the thing that really stood out in the aftermath, and this is, you know, 45 minutes after he's won the US Open, he set six as the target. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you, you want to be a great golfer? My team and I have already discussed this. Six is the number. And it's what makes me believe that we do get a lot of major champions, especially ones who are not necessarily the top five in the world, if you like. And obviously it was Matt's first win in the US. A lot of them take some adjustment. You know, Gary Woodland hasn't kicked on. I know he's had his injury problems. Even Sergio Garcia, it's like... Whew, won a major now it's not been a factor since I think with Matt it's like right on to the next one so no surprise at all if, if he's a factor this week but whatever does happen at St Andrews I think you'll, you'll do well to top that image of him and Billy Foster um, arm in arm on the 18th green just a, a wonderful happy moment and, and one being here in Yorkshire as we are today um, we can all take a, a great deal of joy from definitely you know Billy quite well I think the celebrations yeah. are still ongoing aren't they yeah, I've been to his house. He's got a lovely house. Sort of lives fairly near me, and uh, yeah, I I texted him that same night, and I did notice the little online on his WhatsApp way into the night. And, <laughs> and he got much sleep, but yeah, it is. Some, a lot of people said I can't believe he's not won a major yeah. before. Um, obviously, we, we associate him as one of the very best of Ryder Cups and everything. So yeah, and it was great as well, wasn't that he got that that acknowledgement? Matt's. Fitzpatrick family are so nice aren't they they were almost yeah it's good for Matt but great for Billy (laughs) I do and I think a lot of people he you know he's a we all know him don't we from golfing circles but I think the general public have kind of really warmed him as well I think their relationship is so key because let's be honest personality wise they're very different so look I think it was it was amazing to see him finally pick up that major and and yeah and yeah, on to, on to number six over the next few years. That's his that's his goal, that's his aspiration. So come on then, the Open Championship this week. A lot going on in the world of golf. We've been discussing it for the last few months, previewing all the major championships. How eagerly anticipated is this week's Open Championship? Yeah, hugely. I mean, added to by the fact that we've had to wait a long time for this, you know, and even last year, it seems so long ago, but, you know, for, for what Dave and I do and, and yourself as well, Sarah, although, you know, 
more famous than as you won't have any problems getting access but there was limited media on the grounds last year right so even in the last 12 months we've we're back to normality last year we had players like Hideki Matsuyama and Sung Jae in world-class players skipping the open mm. because they were worried about getting COVID before the Olympics so it really it, it was a brilliant open won by a fabulous player in Colin Marikawa and by Sunday it was all about that but you know St Andrew's been a long time coming this mm. 150th open championship and um you know, for us in in on this time zone, you know, getting up, I think coverage on Sky starts at six thirty on Thursday morning, and it's just round the clock, and we'll see everything. And and at the home of golf, which you know, it's just there's something about the place, isn't there? Um, and and I think you hear it, everyone beams. I saw John Rahm's interview before the Scottish Open. He was like a kid, mm. you know, just cannot wait to get and tee off in an Open at St Andrews. And I know Jack Nicholas says if you want to be a truly great golfer, you've got to win an Open here. I, I think that's probably a bit harsh on <laughs> some of the many, you know, the ninety nine point nine nine percent of players who who never did. But um, the point he's making is that this is different, and it's why you know Tiger Woods. You ask him what's your favourite course? It's not Pebble Beach. Mm. It's not Augusta National. It's St Andrews. So I think that says it all. It's going to be a special week. And everything that goes on in the world of golf, everything that has been going on, do we just feel completely immersed and ready for something spectacular over the next uh, few days? Yeah, uh, the, so kind of the, the be- it's the best place it could be to stop the live yeah. chat for a while, isn't it? It's just, look, we're now at St Andrews. We've waited seven years for this. Um, you know, just enjoy the absolute brilliance of all the history and everything. We don't need to be talking about distracting things. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to that. And, and yeah, it, scarcity does make things more special. So five years is long enough as it is, but seven, that seems such a long time. And it just adds to it, doesn't it? 150th Open. And the the amazing thing, I mean, you kind of know it because he, you know he missed it, but Rory hasn't played an Open there for yeah. 12 years. Yeah. yeah, It's amazing, isn't it? it absolutely. Is. No no games of football in the run-up to this one. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> So we, we're going to get onto your trend speech in just a second, but we were just chatting before we before we came on air. I've played it once, blown away by kind of the history, the aura, the feeling of it. You, I know you just come back from a very successful boys at lads golfing weekend, haven't you? I have, thank you. Yeah. Haven't played at the home of golf though before. No, it's on the bucket list, very yeah. much so. And and personally as well, you know, I, I was at the Open in 2015 and it just, you know, we camped on a hill and it was horribly windy and you know Monday finish it was just a it was a bit chaotic that week and frenzied I, I'd like to experience it on my terms at some stage yeah. um, and I, I'm excited most of all to see what St Andrews provides this week there's been a lot of talk in the build-up you know Paul Laurie mentioned in an interview he wasn't really specifically talking about St Andrews as such but saying you know when we get calm conditions links golf everyone thinks you can shoot 60 um, and there's been talk of what these players could do to it I think Jordan Spee said last week could be a bit of a wedge contest and I just wonder you know I, I know the forecast isn't for a great deal of wind but it doesn't take a lot there it is so exposed um in a way that some open courses aren't because there are more dunes to sort of protect them from the wind um and I just wonder as well you know I'm hopeful and from some of the things we've heard we've heard and I know we'll, we'll hear from Matt who's at the course later on but I think they'll have been doing everything they can not to have the old course embarrassed by today's mm. pros uh, there's only a limit to what they can do. They can't go pushing back and making new tees, but they can let the rough grow, and I gather they have. They can let the fairways get brown, and again, I gather they have. So I think St Andrews might just provide a sterner test than some people think this week, and I hope so. Um, but I wouldn't be one who's obsessed with score anyway. Whatever happens, it's still a, an open at the home of golf. It's going to be special. Do you remember what you shot there? Uh, no, I do remember. It, it that's around. convenient. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I, I, I'm no good at golf. Let's get that straight. Um, but I did... And I, I, um, it was a shotgun start. That will never catch on, will it? <laughs> um, so I started at 14 and then was terrible for a few holes. Hit one into the hotel on 17. Standard. Yeah. <laughs> but then I did, I did then par 18, which was nice because that's the... Nice. Um, I thought of all the players who hadn't parred that. <laughs> then I parred one and then parred two and parred three. So at my level, what, 22 handicapper, that was a memorable little run, but... But yeah, just playing those holes, just feeling like you're walking in the yeah. footsteps of history and it's just incredible. I was saying to you, I remember just going there and, and yeah, standing on the first. It just kind of like it was sort of the eerie, calm, quiet. And it's weird. It's kind of a, a weird sensation. You can't kind of put your finger on it, but you do feel that history. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy. Um, I, found it, I found it very special. What did you shoot? I think it was early 80s. Mm. you'll do you'll do <laughs> yeah. we we did win the team contest my yeah, team and we won a good. driver each oh lovely 
lovely right. fantastic yeah. but no special very special so come on then the, the trends piece which we discussed obviously prior to the PGA prior to the US Open just remind everybody how you come up with the names you do what criteria comes into the trends piece yeah so it's done over 10 years and it's basically done on frequency so um, say 10 Americans had won the last 10 editions any American this time would get the full 10 points so it's done how many times in the 10 years um, and it's worked pretty well so far. So at the US Open, Matt Fitzpatrick mm-hmm. and Will Zalatoris finished joint second in my rankings. So that was quite good. Rory was top ranked at the Masters. He finished runner up there. Uh, so yeah, it's it's just, you'll read so many previews this week where every everyone's quoting a trend of some sort. So the idea behind it was just to aggregate them all, mm-hmm. just to see what it might throw up. Um, so the ele- there's 11 this week. Mm-hmm. So they're world ranking, nationality, age, open form, winning form, recent majors form, major excellence, the Augusta link. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That one uh, is fascinating because nine of the last 10 winners at St. Andrews had, had had a top three in the Masters. So that's a real strong... And you think, oh, is that just random? But then I've read stuff by guys who are really in, into the architecture that say... Uh, Bobby Jones and Alistair McKenzie really looked at St Andrews when they were designing yeah. um, Augusta National, and Ben Crenshaw said the thought process and the strategy is a lot is similar. So that uh, that does work out quite well. Current form St Andrews fit, which I don't know about you, Ben, but I I think scrambling is a massive thing there, as it is in all Opens, and then whether they played the week before, so. Do you want the... We do, we do. So like you said... Slow you, reveal. Big success with PGA and the US Open, clearly working. I know viewers and listeners, it's well liked. They look at this and, you know, who do we... Let's look at Dave's trends piece to see who we can pick for the winner this week. So it, number one... In fact, so, let's, go, let's, start, let's go backwards. So let's do, oh, yeah. A reveal, right, before yeah. We the, before we get to the uh, winner. So one of the three... So there are... T- yeah, so... Yeah. In tenth, yes. we need sort of some <laughs> countdown music. Yeah, all day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll quickly run through yeah. the ten till six. Then Matt Fitzpatrick in ten, yeah. Morikawa defending champion, John Rahm, Sung Jae Im slightly surprised in seventh. He was top for US PGA, so US Open. Justin Rose, he's the one that you think, oh, didn't really expect him to to come out in there. Then the top five. Mm-hmm. Suspension building. Uh, Rory McIlroy. Yeah. Then we've got three players tied on second. Scotty Scheffler, no surprise. Hideki Matsuyama, possibly a surprise. And then the other one is Jordan Spieth. When I originally put this out, it was before the Scottish Open. And one of the trends is whether you've had a top 10 the week before or in the previous three weeks. Spieth did, just. He finished 10th. So he's now bumped up to tied second. But the winner, and bizarrely, given what's happened, is Xander Schaffelet. Wow. Because obviously I wrote that before he won the JP yeah. McManus, before he won the Scottish Open. So if he does what his similar namesake, Scotty Scheffler, did and has this burst of wins, then who knows? Amazing. Well, we talk so much, don't we, about momentum in, in sport, momentum in golf. So Xander Schaffelet, according to your trends piece, is going to be the winner of the Open Championship. And yet, in a rich vein of form, Travellers, as you mentioned, J.P. McManus, Pro-Am, and then, of course, the Scottish Open. Nice to see him as well. I've long been a fan of Xander. Criticism, I guess, held at him was he wasn't winning enough. Delighted to see this current form and probably just rewards for a player of his quality yeah 100 percent um he he's got one of the strangest cvs he's won some you know kind of every kind of golf tournament 30 man 70 man no cart with a cart uh, all over the world and yet um you know a permanent fixture in the world's top 20 for five years you know that relentless consistency and i think if there's anything we don't value enough in golf um consistency i think consistent consistency of excellence you know players like rory who's just been a world-class player for nearly 15 years now and we sort of we get a bit flippant about that and you know he doesn't win very if he's been at the top of his profession for 15 years it's it's pretty remarkable and Xander's on his way to a something like that and yeah it just shows you that I sort of wondered after the travelers you know in some ways he was gifted that in the end he had been overtaken by Sahith Thigala um, who then of course made that unfortunate double bogey but I, I think sports people are very very good at 
convincing themselves of all the positives. Mm. So I think he comes off the travellers not thinking, got away with that. He comes off thinking, birdie the last hole to win. Yeah. Mm. That's that, yeah. you know? And yeah. he, just as he would have felt the Zurich, won the Zurich, even though we all saw Patrick Cantley carry him for the final round. Yeah. So it, it almost doesn't matter the, the, the minor details. The fact is he went and won on the PGA Tour, a solo event for the first time in in four years or whatever it was and and scotland he just looked a lot more assured and you know the conditions were difficult he still made some mistakes but in the end he was a dominant winner he was on the wrong side of the draw as well yeah exactly so a big draw bias so, a, a yeah. bit better than we think one interesting thing with this is i plugged in zach johnson 2015 zach johnson i plugged him into this scoring system and he was what 125 to one he would have come second on this really, list really yeah so back then in 2015 he had a, tremendous credentials but I certainly didn't back him that He year. wasn't for me. <laughs> but he had great open form, current form. He'd won the Masters, so yeah. that Augusta like The week before, came in on yeah. the John Deere flight. Yeah, he was a good age. I've got down here, six of the last 10 champions were 35 or over. So it's, this is the best major for the more experienced guys, definitely. Yeah, we definitely. saw, well, I think, three in their 40s in a row, what, Mickelson, Else, Clark, what, that little run. Um, so, yeah, so it was... It was funny. I thought, oh, I wonder what Zach Johnson is. The, the, obviously, the ideal would be to find this year's Zach Johnson, but I couldn't find. It's Justin one. Rose, I guess, from your Maybe. trends, isn't it? He's just a little bit further yeah. down, but 60 to yeah, one. Yeah, Rose, Rose has had a second in the Masters. Loads of good finishes yeah, yeah. there. So maybe Justin Rose, yeah, is a. It's worth a, a, a few quid. It's just interesting where, that, as you said, you're taking so much into it, but it, it's, it's good to look back at what it's pulled up so far this yeah. year in the majors. So. Yeah, it's sort of. Yeah, you can fault some of the maths, but if, if it keeps throwing out yeah. <laughs> things that seem to be working, um, and I don't know why, it seems people, it seems to get the most likes of anything I ever do. People see it as a kind of... Often it's podcast, of course, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Until today. Written, written thing that yes. I do. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just sort of, I think people sort of love a trend and if you can aggregate them all into one. Yeah, and I think, you know, we all love golf. It's We always like to look at the numbers and the stats yeah. and, you know, look at every sort of criteria and work out, you know, who best fits that. So so Xander for this week, and as we said, great that he picked up that win in Scotland. And I love his mentality, Xander Schofer. Always been a big fan. I think he's pretty even keel and I think, yeah, I think he's going to have a good week. It's the, only, the only thing with him, and it's a silly thought, is I think as he used up all his wins... So we might have thought that a Scheffler though, Scott you know, Scheffler, they, they, yeah. so many of them just keep it going. Yeah. And, and as Sarah said, I think him being so even keeled, I think he. Because I sort of didn't want him to win. I thought, yeah. well, don't win because you've yeah. used it up. But that's the thing. It's like, you know, Roy talked about that before. Winning, you know, the week before, you know, that age old yeah. question do you play the week before? Yeah. Do you want to use up that kind of mental energy? And if you have one, yes, you're in great form. But how exhausted then do you feel physically and mentally? So, yeah, it, we'll see. But I'm just, for me, you know, Olympic gold medalist like what you had to say there I think I think he suffered a little bit when the pressure's been really on but I think now the confidence he's got from his recent form I think he yeah. I think he will be tough to beat this week so I hope you're right yeah we'll get more into sort of the selections a little bit further on let's just go back to the course you've been talking a little bit there made the point about so sort of the weather conditions and as you said a couple of players talking you know will the players tear it apart this week let's just have a little look at a couple of the key holes if we can holes 1 17 and 18 so take us back as well so when when you played and we've discussed this you, you stood on the first tee you're thinking well you know I can hit whatever I like here. I'm still going to find the fairway at one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I hit a fade. Slice would be another term for that. Um, so you can aim so far left, yeah. it's not true. I do remember when John Daly won there, um, that everyone was saying, that's fine because all the trouble is down the right. So if you hitting it left, because they, they said, I saw a mate of mine say, Xander's miss is, let me get this right, Xander's miss is left where there's no trouble so under pressure then he's gonna he's gonna find fairways because there's the space down the left um i don't know when i played it i had that in mind but yeah it's obviously the space down the left on the first and the 18th mm. but do you remember it being everywhere space down the left no I no don't particularly no but i know for that opening hole in 18 yeah you, you feel like you can you can't you can although we, tow it or heal it and you, you know yeah. <laughs> there is there is room there and it's kind of it's weird that you you're stood there and you you do have that amount of yeah. space although it's not absolutely foolproof because uh ian baker finch when he was sort of losing his game went out of bounds on the right on the first yeah. and then um adam scott 
And those who backed Adam Scott each way in 2015 will recall he was about fifth playing the last and he and he drove it out of bounds. I mean, how? I think you were one of them on him. Yes, yeah, I yeah. was. Yeah. And he finished tenth, and and there were I think only maybe eight each way places. So how how could he do that? I don't know. Uh, who knows? Who knows? But he yeah. should have just aimed. Yeah, he could have aimed so far left. It's it's not true. So so yeah. So I think generally the feeling is there. You, you have got space down the left. That's yeah. that's a better side. Where maybe at Augusta, maybe that is different because they say the bad miss at Augusta is left. And Raw, I think Rory's found that famously mm-hmm. in 2011. Yeah. So we'll see whether that applies to all the holes. I don't know, but um, yeah, I just think for the opening hole, it's quite yeah, a benign to start you, yeah. to get you going. And but as we talk, you know, the history, the tradition, everything that comes with it. So let's move on. We've seen a little fly through of one 17, without doubt, probably the hardest hole in the golf course. Yeah, and I would say probably the most famous 17th hole in golf. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for one of you to tell me, but you know, we all recognize the hotel on the right. Sawgrass. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's true, very good good one. Um, I have a, I play with a friend at the weekend who said he played St. Andrews and his caddy said to him, aim at the hotel. And he said, well, are you sure? He said, yeah, aim at the hotel, the wind will bring it back. And he was furious because he aimed at the hotel flushed it and hit the hotel but um <laughs> generally speaking you take a line closer than you think to the hotel you cut the corner it'd be interesting to see how much of the corner some of these guys cut um as you said dave the miss if you do miss left it's not dead whereas it is if you miss right um which is certainly true for for the majority of the holes here and yeah we we see all the fun and games of the 17th the bunker obviously guarding the front left of the green and then the wall at the back i, I remember miguel angel jimenez mm-hmm. He's not the only one, but using yeah. the wall to, yeah. to get it back onto the green. So it's it's a daunting hole, but it's also a fun hole. You know, there's like most holes at St. Andrews, I, I feel it. OK, you can't miss right off the tee, but that you can recover. That's yeah. the point. You know, if you do hook it 30 yards left off the tee, you can play that recovery shot with your second or get up and down from the bunker, use the wall, whatever you've got to do. Yeah. Um, and we'll see the full repertoire. And I think second shots to that 17th, some players were going with an eight iron, a nine iron. Some will be with a three wood because they've, they've missed it left off the tee. So yeah, it's a fantastic hole. And apart from the 17th at Sawgrass. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's great viewing hole. If you're, if you're stood behind that wall on the 17th, you can see how they've got to, they've got to sort of draw it in just to, make it run along the green but i think now as well you know you, you, the top trace with the camera angles you see you, you know you've seen them hitting towards the hotel and it's brilliant because yeah. you just you've seen them you know the shot shape working the ball trying to hit it out there and you know draw it right to left it's it's brilliant but you're right great viewing and then the difficulty is 17 you come to 18 as we've said you don't want to head it right at 18 but if we show the fly through as well at the, the final hole again you know if you need a a par to hopefully take the walk over swilkin bridge and hoist the claret jug it's Again, there's room, there's space. It has to be the best hole in golf to need four to win a major, yeah. right? There's yeah. no... I mean, I don't think Augusta's the worst by any means. You know, the 18th at Augusta... But that tee shot 18 at Augusta... It's a narrow tee shot, yeah. isn't it? But I feel like you... Yeah, there are there are tougher places to go anyway. But St Andrews, a big birdie opportunity. We, we've seen some fabulous moments here down the years. I think it's not the gimme birdie that... You know, I, I remember there seemed to be a lot of players arrive at the 18th back in 2015 obviously it had been wet and windy that week yeah. and it was playing soft and we we're all waiting for speed to make the birdie and get into the playoff and jason day to get in the playoff with it and they came up short mm-hmm. because they put that front pin where if you do miss your wedge short you're in the valley of sin and 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 all of a sudden five and six is is coming so and another fabulous hole and when i do get to play st andrews one where you can i think any player of any standard really can feel like they've got a chance but um, well, if i parred it anyone can oh there you go that's what i was getting at really <laughs> When we look as well, as we talk about the weather conditions and some of the comments that the players have been making, do you, what sort of test do you think St Andrews will, will provide? Are we are we going to see, without getting too hung up on, on the low numbers and the scores, do you think the breeze is going to be significant enough that we're going to see the old course bear its teeth? Well, I think the average over the last three opens there is minus 15. I think it'll be, it'll go to more nearer to 20 than that. I don't think it'll be crazy. As we've seen that all the pictures, it's very brown. Matt will come on and talk mm-hmm. about this. It looks very browned out. You know, you're not just landing it on the green, plopping it down, and it sits. You've still got to think how to get near to the flag. Um, so yeah, I think it's a bit exaggerated that it's we're going to see sort of 25 under win. Clip this bit out later. But <laughs> yeah, I could see like minus 18. That'd be yeah, I guess. tend to agree. I, I think the thing. About 2015, which was minus 15 in the playoff, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Like they, they had some bad wind, obviously had to stop playing. But it was also very, very soft that year. 
Um, and I think the one thing that will hopefully um, prove enough to keep these guys honest this week will be that it, it's going to be it's going to be firm and fast. Mm. So mm. you give them firm and fast conditions, and it's never easy. And I don't think it will be easy. Whatever whatever happens. Yeah, it'll be fascinating. We mentioned Matt. We can hear from Matt Cooper now, a Betfair golf tipster who is live for us at St Andrews. Hello, nice to, uh, to speak to you all. First of all, Matt, we've, we've just been discussing uh, the course, the, the, the weather forecast, etc. for the week. How does the course look? How do conditions set fair for, for the championship days? Yeah, I was listening to what you were saying and, it, and it's bang on. It's very brown, especially up, up, up to, the, to the greens. And they put a bit of water on the greens, but um, the rough's very wispy, but also quite thick in places. And I was also very impressed with your predictions of the of the winning score because we've we've just had Matt Fitzpatrick in, and he was chatting about what he and Billy Foster had been predicting, and the number they came up with was eight and eighteen under par. So you guys uh, got a smack <laughs> on the on the nose. I'm very impressed. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Talk us through, I guess, the week, some of the storylines. Obviously, we've been reading and, dis- and discussing in the media the last few days. Matt, for you, what are the key storylines heading into the 150th Open Championship? Yeah, well, I, I won't repeat what you said. It's very clear that the town is in quite a frenzy. It's quite giddy. Uh, you know, you've got Americans G whizzing around everywhere. Uh, I had a wonderful little time last night in the Jigger Inn. It was very quiet there. It's going to become very corporate as the week goes on. But I ended up chatting over the over the brick wall to a local from St Andrews who told me amazing stories about watching Carrie Middlecoff hit off old granny at the the, the tarmac in front of the 18th uh, he watched Tony Lima and Arnold Palmer play then and it, it felt really quite quite emotional because as he told me his stories I could I could see all these old golfers in color whereas I tend to sort of imagine that before I was born the, the whole world happened in black and white but it really gave me a sense that you know these these great golfers were playing in color. They were playing this golf course, and it, it gave me a real, a real vivid sense of the history of the place. Uh, and I, so I, I think we can't get away from the fact that the history is going to be a, a, a big story this week, and potentially it's going to be one of the, 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 the pretty much every golfer is going to be obviously motivated by the fact that the, that the history is there. But I, I think looking for somebody who who, who that allows them to put the fire in their belly is, is definitely a thing to go looking for. Definitely. For you, who's your pick for this week? Well, I'm, a, I'm always a bit of a soft dude with Jordan Spieth. Whenever he starts talking about the fact that a, a golf course fires the, the sort of neurons in his brain when it comes to creativity around the, uh, around the greens and on the greens. So uh, the fact that he likes the golf course is a, is a big thing in his favour. And also, I'm, I'm, I'm quite sweet on Tommy Fleetwood this week. I think the fact that he got a top five uh, quite recently in uh, the US PGA is is quite a big thing for him, and he's coming back to the Dun uh, to the home of the Dunhill Links as well as the home of the golf, where he has a great record on the old course. Uh, seven years ago, it, he were, he was let it was let it known to him that he had a good record on the course, and it got in his head a little bit. I think a little bit older, a little bit wiser, he's got it in him to uh, to, to make the most of his his fondness for the track this week. Definitely. And just a word, Mike, you, you talk about sort of, you know, the conversations in the town and just the general feeling. What What is the kind of the buzz, even just around the media centre today, you know, Monday of the Open Championship week, just the general sense of everything that's going on in the world and in the world of golf right now, that we are back here at, at the home of golf and, and what should be a nostalgic, just a very, very special, unbelievable few days of golf. Yeah, I, I, th- I think in the media centre, it's very obvious that it's, it's quite different to last year. Um, I was at Royal St George's, and I mean to be honest, that was that was a very emotional uh, moment because it was the, it was the first time back on a Lynx golf course, and it, it, I can remember as I walked up to the golf course that day, just hearing the crack of the flags, you know, they, they snap in the wind, and hearing the sort of the bleachers around the 18th, uh, the 18th green, hearing those seats snap back after people leave them, those sort of weird noises, the, the sound of, of of sort of shots being hit on top of a dune and in between a dune that those, those are the sort of noises and the, and the sights that really got you going but at the same time the the media center was like a third full to to sort of um make it a safer place to be this year it's it's far fuller it's it's really noticeable that uh, st andrews is buzzing with a lot of people and the, the whole structure of the of the golf course is so vastly different to 2015 there are and the, 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 i mean there's armies of marshals and workers it's it's quite extraordinary. I mean, I, I can't even begin to think how the, the population has been increased um, during this period. I, mean, I, I stayed in the campsites last night. I'm in the town for the rest of the week. 
Um, but there are 2,500 people staying in that campsite behind the Old Course Hotel um, uh, per night. Uh, uh, it's just an extraordinary operation that the RNA have put on. And will you be frequenting the Jigger again this week? Or you said it's going to turn a bit corporate, is it, for the next few days? <clears throat> Yeah, well, there are rumours that if you've got a ticket, you can get through the front door. But uh, yeah, I think the corporates are going to get hold of it for the rest of the week. But I did befriend the security guard, Adil from Sudan, who's, who's moved over to Edinburgh. And uh, I, I ended up explaining to him the game golf because he's never seen it. His, when I explained what the, what the sand pits and the flattish pits did, he, his laugh echoed across St Andrews and it was a joyous sort of sound as I sort of explain the game of golf and and I, I really love it when you when you you tell people what golf's all about you see through fresh eyes just what a slightly bizarre experience and, and sport it is but at the same time it, it, one that like has obviously captured the imagination of millions of people around the world and I think that they're all going to be looking at this spot for the next uh, the next seven days. They really are. Good stuff, Matt. Thank you. And enjoy it if you do head back to the Jigger. Enjoy the week. It's going to be something special. And uh, we'll look out for your updates as well, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, so Jordan Spieth, Matt's fancy for the week. Uh, Dave, let's get, to the, uh, let's get to the meaty bit of the podcast then for you. Who's your, who's your winner at St Andrews? Jordan Spieth. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we didn't... Unscripted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we didn't... Uh, I didn't liaise with Matt about this to, to make this a big gamble on Spieth. But yeah, for all he says, we just think he... He doesn't see straight lines. I think mm. Jordan Spieth sees curves and different um, different ways the ball goes into the hole. And he, he loves the creativity. Obviously won the Open in 2017. A birdie would have got him into the playoff, wouldn't it, in 2015? Yeah. So he loves this course as well. Top 10 in Scotland last week. Yeah, he finished a bit poorly, but a top 10 was a good run out. A lot, a lot of the big players didn't play well at all. He got four good rounds under his belt. He's won this season as well. Um, mm. Just loves loves this tournament. Um, so yeah, I just thought Jordan Spieth, the man to beat. Full of confidence as well, and we know that when Spieth is full of confidence and he's got that swagger back, he, yeah, could potentially be tough to beat. Ben, for you, who's the who's your who's your pick? I'm going with the Aussie version, really, mm -hmm. of Jordan Spieth, Cameron Smith. I, I think um, this could be really good for him. And I, I spoke last month when we discussed the U.S. Open that for me. Aside from the slightly freakish US Open at Chambers Bay when he sort of emerged on the scene, um, that tournament will never really work for him because for all that driving accuracy is not as important as it's sometimes said, the, the things that catch Smith out are hard to recover from. He has a big miss, it's usually to the left, so hopefully some of the things we touched upon about the old course will, will help in that regard. But he needs somewhere where he can mitigate the mistakes because he will make mistakes. Uh, with a run of birdies and I think that's why he likes Augusta I, I think Augusta always gives you those opportunities if you're prepared to take on some risk um, and and I see similarities obviously as Dave's touched upon there are very strong matches between Augusta and the old course now he's not won at Augusta but he's come mighty close on a couple of occasions all the creativity that we speak about with Spieth around the greens will will absolutely sing to him He's played brilliantly in, in a couple of majors already this year, um, you know, from tee to green, and somehow his putter let him down. He's like the reverse Zalatoris mm -hmm. in these majors. He puts brilliantly all year, and then he's turned up and made nothing. Uh, and he, he's, he's obviously twice a winner this year. He, he won the Tournament of Champions and the Players' Championship. Uh, very similar profile to Shane Lowry, I think, in, in 2019. Like He'd done all his good stuff at the start of the season, but he's coming back to the boil. He played three very good rounds in four at the Scottish Open, where he finished 10th. Um, we're getting a bigger price than we got at Augusta um, and I just think he'll love it if he can get away with those misses um, he, you know I'd, I'd love another 10 yards off the tee but everything else about him screams uh, someone who'll love the old course he's done a chat with Matt Fitzpatrick indeed yeah get some speed <laughs> training Cameron lazy <laughs> um, let's have a look at each way bets then uh, also worth noticing as, uh, noticing as well pick your place terms of Betfair uh, upcoming on the 2022 Open Championship 8, 10 and 12 uh, places available bigger odds or wider place terms the choice is yours and as ever also just worth noting as well exchange always the home of bigger prices and the best place for in play bets and as always I have to say to remind you all please do gamble responsibly uh, Dave, each way bet. Where are we looking? Yeah, I, I went for Tony Fee now in this category. Um, he didn't play the Scottish Open, which I was a bit surprised by. But then I was thinking, why wouldn't he do that? Maybe it's because he's played in the Alfred Dunhill Links a couple of times. So he's come to St Andrews and had a, a couple of good runs under his belt. I think he finished 10th both times. Mm -hmm. Shot a 66 in one of those rounds. And he's one of these players, you look through his record, so much of his good form is by the sea. 
got a really good open record as well. I think he's got a top five and two top tens at Augusta, so there's that link as well. He's got the form. He was runner-up, wasn't he, in the Canadian Open, runner-up in Mexico. So just a lot of form lines seem to converge on Tony Fee now. So, yeah, you, you sometimes get a, a little bit worried in the finish and how does he get over the line. He might, could be one of these where maybe he posts a score and hopes it stands up. But as an each way proposition, I think I think fifty eight places, and then it goes down in increments of five. So he's forty five to one with ten places. Um, I think, yeah, he he just ticks a lot of ticks a lot of boxes for me. And, and on this course, with that extra bonus that he's come over for the Alfred Dunhill mm. links, it'd be nice if he was rewarded for that sort of prep. Yes, definitely. You're liking Fino as well, aren't you? I'm afraid I'm agreeing, yeah. Which, <laughs> I left uh, it with anything to say. A, a double vote with Sorry. Tony Fino. No, I'd pick up on that last point. I mean, obviously with Cameron Smith, he doesn't have the course experience. I do sort of think, and, and look, it's only a year since Colin Morikawa won on his Open debut. Yeah. And these days, I think experience probably, you know, generally can be overcome but it doesn't hurt in Finau's case that he's been here for the Dunhill links and you think Zach Johnson had played St Andrews a couple of times when Louis won here in 2010 yeah he was he was a new name on the scene but he played the Dunhill links you know had strong connections with the golf course and and Tiger played here as an amateur so um it, it's helped all the recent St Andrews winners to have had a look around as Dave said you know he's a golfer who, who really won't mind usually with big hitters um, we think, well, you need a bit of rain. You know, mm. everyone seems to think Rory wants it soft, and and certainly he'd prefer it that way. Finau's different. Um, I I think he's he's a vastly creative player, um, in a way that sometimes gets lost because of his power. He's got great touch around the greens, and the thing he, he's kind of hit the ball the same all year. But the thing that's come around recently is his short game played really nicely at the Travelers. I'm not too fussed about whether they played last week or not. I kind of becoming as the more I look at golf tournaments, the more trusting I am of players to get do what's right for them, you yeah. know. And he certainly doesn't have um, much to learn about the old course. He was there at the weekend, um, and I thought from the moment he won the the Northern Trust last year that um, that should be the the missing piece in the jigsaw. And he's not quite had the floodgates open like Xander Schauffele, but it wouldn't surprise me if he were able to upstage him here. I bet he'd do a really good speech as well if he won. Great, wouldn't it? Amazing. I mean, he's he's one of the most popular guys, isn't he? Yeah. Let's be honest. I mean, among his peers, fellow pros, but for us in the media, every, fans, everybody loves him, don't they? Yeah. He'd be such a popular winner, wouldn't he? Especially with us. Yeah, yeah, with us in particular. I, I yeah. think one of the, you know, the other thing to say is like, of all the open venues, I do think, and this might be a bit simplistic, but I think the Americans generally are a bit better at St. Andrews than, than some of the other ones. Mm. I think there's... Um, there might be all sorts of reasons for that. Maybe it is that they really feel that they're moved by this experience in a way they're not moved by other courses. I agree, yeah. Um, but but also here, I you know for all I've I've gone with Smith and I, I do like his creativity. That bit of extra ten yards off the tees it mm. could help this week. I, I don't think they'll completely overpower it, but certainly you think I was like the ninth and and Finau could could well be up there on the green with his tee shot. So it, it's hard to see him playing badly. I think mm. you know you're getting ten twelve places. I'd be disappointed if we don't get a good run yeah. at that. Yeah. But that great blend of yeah power and absolute creativity and quality around the green, soft hands, a super guy as well. So yeah, we wish him well. Special selections for this week, Dave. Uh, How Tong Lee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Best celebration of the year for me. Anyone on the DP World Tour. <laughs> you did back I was. In the week before, it was. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you think am I picking him because of recent form? Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's an element of that. Um, but he's got these two other things. He. If you remember, he shot a 64, was it? The final round, or was it 63? Final round at um, Roll Birkdale to finish third. So he's finished third in an open already, which is fantastic. Um, he was halfway leader in a, a 2020 US PGA. He's got another top 20, I think, in a US Open. So he's sometimes you look at guys, maybe someone like Billy Horse, you think, oh, he's playing well. And you look at his open, his majors record, and it's terrible. Mm. But Hao Tong Lee seems to be one of those who's gone straight into it and played well. And then he's another who's played really well in the Alfred Dunhill links. Mm -hmm. And I totted it up and I checked with Ben, who's gone through, painstakingly gone through all their... Uh, it's been a long month. Yeah. <laughs> on, stripped out all the St. Andrews part of the Dunhill links. Yeah. Because obviously played on three courses. And I got, and Ben did very... Ben fact-checked to this for me. How Tong Lee has played six rounds at St. Andrews and he, he's a combined 25 under. Wow. Good so teamwork, 67.83, I think yes, that works, right? right? It's a fabulous, one of the top 10 scoring averages in the tournament. Yeah. 
The best, by the way, is Justin Thomas, but there's a big big red flag next to that because he played it once and he shot 66. So yeah, it's yeah. not so much yeah. an average as a well. I hope there's a big red flag with Hao Tong Lee when he's won and he's <laughs> winning for China. But um, yeah, it's an average of 67-ish, four of those, 20 under. And as we know, 18 under is, is the official, the winning, official score. winning total. Yeah. And he wins, it's simple as that. So yeah, specials, what you do with him, top 20 maybe mm-hmm. would be a way to do that. I mean, top 10 even, but then you, you back him in the each way market just in some way shape or form i think getting how tong lee is a, a sneaky little good bet there it could be a top asian option as well yeah, because yeah. you know hideki matsuyama is kind of on my radar but his open record sort of getting worse and he didn't play it last year sung jay chose to skip it last year as well and you know maybe maybe it doesn't mean as much to him as, as we would think of. maybe that's harsh because obviously they had the olympics in tokyo but yeah top asian top rest of the world is he's, he's definitely want to, to dig around for absolutely and for you a specials who's what's piqued your interest i've got thriston lawrence for the top south african here and i know some people will be listening and thinking well come on give us someone we've heard of but um you know we've got david lingworth over the line somehow by a single shot in the uh, in the u.s open i do think with majors sometimes you've got to dig around a lot but these are some of the best opportunities actually and and with the top south african market the, the basic logic is louis clearly not at his best and he hasn't been all year um, I'm not certain this is an ideal test for Bezaden, who, um, who's the other joint favourite. And you get past those two and, and they're much of a muchness, really. Um, Dylan Fratelli's got a good open record, but he's not playing very well and he's very, very wild off the tee. Eric Van Royen's in a, in a really bad run of form. Dean Burmester showed a bit more in Scotland, but again, you know, he's, he's got some good rounds here, but I, I, I think he probably lacks a bit of subtlety. And Thriston Lawrence, he, he is a new name on the scene. He won the Joburg Open. He's probably quite lucky because it was... Um, cut to 36 holes he never really had to play golf under pressure uh, but that got him his open spot but the most impressive thing is he's just kicked on we saw him contending for the Irish Open he played well top 30 finish last week in Scotland you go back to his amateur pedigree it's really really good amateur championship uh, I think he might have won the Lytham Trophy um, so he's got loads of links experience and links form you can back him each way about 10, 12 maybe even 14 to 1 three places it's only about 10 or 12 runners i I think if he makes the cut, you'll get paid out. So, yeah, hopefully he does that. You convinced me. Good, that's the job. Me. There we go. An exchange bet, Dave. Yeah, so you can do all sorts of this. You can go right at the top end. You can go further down. I've gone for someone fairly near the top, Shane Lowry. Mm-hmm. I do think if he makes an impression early, I think his price will crash. So he's a, he's a good back to lay because, oh, that's Shane Lowry. He's won the Open before. Um, he, uh, he's going to do this again. He's played really well this year without winning. Um, he probably should have won the Honda. And the Honda is, is a great predictor of the Open, isn't it? We've had Todd Hamilton win there, Justin Leonard. Harrington's won there, won there subsequently. Harrington, yeah. any else. Yeah. You go through it, and everyone. Worry. <laughs> yeah, everyone who's won it has either won the Open or finished runner-up. Uh, so Shane Lowry, yeah, he he nearly missed the cut in the Irish Open, but he just he was brilliant, didn't he? He made that brilliant run to make it, and then he kicked on on the weekend. Um, I just think maybe he's timing it perfectly again and because he's got one under his belt already I just think he, he knows he can do this again he's got all that Alfred Dunhill links form so he's around I don't know, 27 on the exchange I just think as soon as he shows his hand a little bit I think that price will come crashing down yeah and for you Ben I've got one at a really big price and it's just kind of hoping that he can kick on he shot 66 in the final round of the Scottish Open if he can just one of those on Thursday to get the the timing right. Um, it's Keith Mitchell, um, and a, a nod to the Scotsman's Martin Dempster for picking up on this story. When he qualified for the Open at, in Canada, he revealed that his dad's a member of the RNA. His sister went to St Andrews University. He's played the old course loads, and at the start of this year, when he was writing down his goals, number one on the list, qualified for the Open Championship um, under pressure from his dad, I believe. So, first of all, a massive achievement to go and do that when you've got such a clear goal. Um, but also former winner of the Honda Classic. Yep. So we, we're back to yep. that as a really good major guide. All of his good form seems to come when it's tough. You know, he, he, he really does know how to grind. He's a big hitter, so we get a couple of drivable par fours, hopefully. Um, and after a slow start, he finished off really well in the Scottish Open last week. I, I, I kind of think he's probably been cottoned on to a little bit. The, the cat might be out of the bag in terms of getting those 10 and 12 places each way. But on the exchanges, he was over 200. And then, you know, you can maybe do something with that. You, you know, I know the minimum bet now on the exchange is a pound as well. So you've got a fun interest for your pound. If you're having more on, you might get a chance to, to trade out because I alluded to it earlier. I think we will see a good number of Americans and uh, he could be one of them. He'd certainly be a big story this week if it does happen. Nice. And, you know, as we sum up 
look back, look, talked about the course, some of the key names. Best bet for the tournament. We've had some good names here. We've looked at winners, obviously, each way, specials. What's your overriding? If you're going to, just as a little summary, best bet for the tournament, one that's, you know, really going to grab people's interest. Yes, obviously, I, I am in, mo emotionally invested with the trends <laughs> pick of Xander Schaffler, but I'll go with Spieth. Yeah. I'm really into Spieth this week. I think it's going to be a Spieth week. That agreed. Yeah. I like the Spieth pick. And Ben, for you. Yeah, I'm going to nail my colours to the Cameron Smith mast. But I, I will say this. We haven't really mentioned Rory McIlroy. And it wouldn't have taken much more on the price for me to think he was the bet. Um, I, I do think, you know, he missed it in 2015 when he was out undone by the draw in 2010 after that brilliant start. Um, we all thought Rory will win at the old course. And actually, you don't get that many chances to miss one of those chances mm -hmm. in 2015. Um yeah, I think he's going to have a huge week. So I wouldn't go as far as to say, you know, my best bet. But these days you can bet forecasts and you get massive prices because picking the winner of a golf tournament is hard enough. Picking the seconds, uh, ridiculous. But have with Rory first or second, with some of the other big names, I, I think he'll be up there is what I'm trying to say. I think it's going to be a big week for Rory. And he's one of those. He won't make my staking plan, but I'll be the happiest man in town if he wins. Definitely. And just a quick, before we just wrap up, a quick word on Tiger as well. There's the... There has been a few rooms, you know, he's coming back, two-time winner at St Andrews. Mobility-wise, he doesn't look great. We've all seen the pictures, the images. It's going to be a special week. He earmarked this. He desperately wanted to play here this week. Some people are saying, you know, this this could be it. Do you, you know, what? what's your... I don't know, I've kind of got that feeling. What a place to almost go out. You know, physically, we, we don't really know how bad, it, how bad he is because he doesn't let on. And also, he's trying his hardest to make sure he's he's going to be out there. Yeah. I mean, it up. Could it be, though? Uh, no, <laughs> I mean it's a it's a very flat piece of land that that's in his favour compared to Augusta where you know, it's all up and down. But sorry, could it be in terms of the? Do you think this could be a farewell? Could this be a? In terms of yeah, yeah, I I, I fear picture on the bridge waving on but on Friday or will it be Sunday? It's Tiger Woods, so I think it might be Sunday. I think it, yeah, I've got a feeling he might do okay for thirty six yeah. holes and then it'll just catch up with him. So fairly early in the piece on Sunday, before all the, the big stuff is decided, we get the image of Tiger waving. I, I could see it. I, I don't know. I don't know. It, I, interesting, Paul Laurie's another, you know, he said he doesn't think he deserves, and I think it's nonsense, the, the fanfare of a Swilkin Bridge send-off. Yeah. So he's not committed to this being his last, but he does deserve that, and, mm. and that would have been a nice thing, and perhaps that's something that will change as the week goes on. But as far as Tiger goes, I have to say I was alarmed when I saw a a video of him swinging on Sunday and I just I, I know it sometimes can be misleading but I just thought this that's not a swing that can do a no. lot mm. in this game no. going forward I'm afraid so I think he's very close to the end um this has been such a big target and I think um I don't know if he's the type of man to to do that and to to really embrace that moment but I, I think this is the last we'll see him at St Andrews yeah. yeah and you could also see he might play and then take time to reflect not necessarily have it as a big sort of grand this is me i'm done but it could well be in a few weeks months time yeah yeah and if he if he shot if he shot 68 on sunday somehow got through to sunday shot 68 maybe you think right that's it yeah given everything yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and if it, if it is the case then we'll be able to reflect and we'll have time to do so i'm sure in future yeah. on, on a brilliant career but i'm so glad he's made it here yeah. because let's face it when Same, that car crash yeah. happened you know whether he'd make it back to golf at all was in great doubt so. yeah i know just yeah i just think it's worth physically what from what we've seen it it there are a few signs aren't there that this uh, this could well be it yeah okay chaps thank you look thank forward you. to seeing right. how your selections and picks uh, work out uh, for the next few days uh, thank you uh, for listening also just uh, before i head off just to mention uh, betting.betfair.com will have plenty of extra content through the week uh, steve rawlings will be blogging across all four days with in-play updates plus three ball and two ball tips throughout the tournament get on dave's picks get on ben's picks they'll be successful as ever we look forward to uh, coming back together i don't know when for our next golf any better podcast and discussing how successful you were but thank you very much chaps and thank you uh, for listening uh, we will see you soon and enjoy the open championship at st andrews